Okay, in this video I'd like to discuss something which is absolutely vital in your applied maths and it's so vital in fact that most books, textbooks and teachers will ignore it because they will, if they if they just pretend it, it, it doesn't matter or they never let you uh, think about it well then it'll never become a problem and uh, I suppose that perhaps is the case but it's 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 it causes um, problems when people go to college. Like I said, I think the Newton's third law is one of the least understood um, laws in classical physics and people think it's simple when it is not. So what I want to do here is show the something which I call the massless rope and show Newton's third law in action. A very important way. Something we'll show you once or twice and after that let you just understand what it means. And I'm taking it from example two of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics but that's neither here nor there. So basically what we have is we have um, a body which I'm going to call a boat and the boat has a mass of 120 kilograms and we have a rope and at the end of the rope we have a man and the man is pulling the rope. We have, uh, we have a, 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 um, a frictional force as well and I'll talk about that in a moment. So the first thing we need to do is to work out the weight of the particle. So I'm going to define my unit vectors like this, i hat and j hat, and I'm going to define my gravity vector like this, where gravity is equal to negative 9.81. All right. Uh, or actually, yeah, negative 9.81. So what can we do here? Well, let's work out using Newton's second law. F is equal to m a. So 120. No, take that back. F is equal to 120 times the acceleration. So the acceleration of a body on Earth is gravity. So if this is equal to, uh, yeah, 120 g. All right, and this is in the j hat direction. Now, this is a negative number because I define gravity as being a negative number. So what we can say is this, that the weight of the body here, the weight is equal to 120 g. Now look, if you want to leave it at minus 120 g, well that's just fine, there's nothing wrong with that. And of course, as a result, we have a normal force, like so, and the normal force is equal to minus 120 g. Or you could say positive, it doesn't really matter, just pick a sign and stick with it. So I'm going to get rid of this because we have a bit of clutter now. Next we have a frictional force, and it's 40 newtons in the negative, j dire negative i direction. So we have r and its magnitude is equal to 40 and we'll say r is equal to negative 40 i hat. Now the thing about this is what is this frictional force acting on? And the answer is on the boat. So I'm going to put a little subscript here. That's the resistance force on the boat. The weight on the boat and the normal force. What about the rope? Now this is where we're getting a bit a bit uh, difficult. So how will we do this? Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this diagram here just down to here so we can chat about it. So here is the there's the the boat or the the boat again. And here is my rope. All right? Now what forces have we on the rope? All right? The first force we have is the force of the man on the rope. The force of the man on the rope. And every action has an equal but opposite reaction. So we have the force of the rope on the man in that direction, like so. What else do we have? We have the fact that the rope is touching the boat. So we have the force of the rope on the boat. And we have an equal but opposite reaction, the force of the boat on the rope. Okay, that's the first thing. So these two are action-reaction pairs and these two are action-reaction pairs. So the overall effect of this vector can be zero depending on what it's, what it's acting on and same with this one. However, what's really important to note here is what they're act actually affecting. This vector here is acting on the man. This vector here on the rope. This one on the boat and this one on the rope. So what vectors are acting on the rope? So let's just redraw my rope. And the two vectors acting on my rope are FBR, the force of the boat on the rope, and F, 
mr, the force of the man on the rope. And the question is, are these action-reaction pairs, are they Newton's third law pairs? No, absolutely not. Why not? Well, first of all, because here are the action-reaction pairs. Or you could also say, well, look at, the, look at the subscripts. Are they just being swapped? And the answer is no. They're not. They're being caused by different things. They're acting on the same body. Okay? They must act on different bodies for them to be Newton's third law pairs. These are both acting on the rope. Now, watch this. We know from Newton's second law that the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So what's the sum of the forces here? It's FBR plus FMR. Don't mind the signs. I know the signs are taken in there somewhere. Is equal to the mass of the rope times the acceleration of the rope. Now, what happens if there is a mass? What if the rope has a mass? That means the rope has an acceleration. And it means that these two are not equal. This is not equal to this. Because there, are net, there will be a net force and the rope will be moving as a result. So the only way for us to have no net force is if the mass is equal to zero. We have a massless rope. Now, in the question proposed in the book, it does not say that. It doesn't say it. It assumes that you'll forget about it or not even think about it. All right? Or assumes you don't understand Newton's third law. And as a result, you may go through school and perhaps college and not understand it, yet think it's very straightforward. So, if there is a mass on the rope, then F, the magnitude of FBR is not equal to the magnitude of FMR. Absolutely not. However, if we have a massless rope, if the mass of the rope is equal to zero, then this becomes zero, and we get that F, the magnitude of FBR is equal to the magnitude of FMR. So it means that the, the tension either side of the rope is equal. And you get as a result of that, that whatever the man applies on the rope on the, on the right is applied to, the, to the, the boat on the left. So we know that the man has a tension, is applying 100 units of force here, so this will turn out to be 100. And it's not because these are action-reaction pairs, but rather it's only happening because we have a massless rope. If you don't have a massless rope, then this won't happen. Alright? So, the thing about it is that, uh, yeah, that's on the rope. So the question is this, just before I continue on to, the, uh, on to what I was thinking there. Well, what are, what are acting on the boat? Because we are only interested in what's happening the boat. So the only force on the boat is F, where is it gone? F, R, B. All right. But we just found that F, B, R is equal in magnitude to F, uh, M, R. Okay, that's the first thing. These are not action-reaction pairs, but these two are. Therefore, F, B, R is equal to 100 units. So, that's very important. And what you get as a result, as I said, is that you get 100 units acting on the boat. Alright? And what you will see, what you will see is that people will draw and you, your teacher will do it, I'll be very surprised if your teacher doesn't do it, is they'll just draw your rope and straight out they'll just go T, T. Saying that implies that these are Newton's third law action-reaction pairs and that they're equal because it's, for, I don't know, for what reason? But they're not equal, not necessarily equal. They are only equal where there is a massless rope. Okay? But just remember, they are not Newton's third law action-reaction pair. Now you might, say, you might say this is all a bit pedantic, but it's not at all, because do you know of a massless rope? I certainly don't. So in order for you to analyse these, you, you do need to have a massless rope, unless, of course, you're doing um, you know, college mathematics or more advanced than that. So look, just to finish off this, uh, I won't do the whole question, but what I have really is that it, the overall effect is that the man applies 100 newtons here, and there are a hundred newtons, yeah, on on the uh, excuse me, on the hundred newtons on the boat. So the sum of the forces, uh, sum of the forces in the i hat direction will be equal to sixty i hat, like so. All right, um, 
yeah, and that's that's pretty much all I've got to say about that. Look, if there are any questions, please, please, please pass them on to me. And I uh, hope you enjoyed watching that. Thanks for watching again. Uh, please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.